Hey guys, Telegram Sam here. If you don't already know, I have an Instagram. It's Telegram underscore Sam underscore vinyl. So if you're on Instagram, check me out on there. But today's video is just a recent vinyl pickups where I show you guys the records I've gotten uh, this last two weeks. I have a lot. Again, hopefully this won't be another half hour <laughs> video, but I'm going to try to make it as short as I can. But I want to you know, talk about the records. <laughs> So let's get started with the 7 inches. First we're going to start with the stuff I bought myself. So first off we got this um, Cough Cool 7 inch by The Misfits. This was their first ever release. It, it came out in 1977. I think this is a recent uh, reissue. Uh, US Press, I mean great punk rock if you're not familiar with The Misfits. Uh, but yeah this was released on Danzig's label during the time called Blank Records. And just such a killer debut from such what would end up becoming such a seminal band in the whole New York punk scene. And you have Cough Cool on the first side and She on the second side. And She is one of my favorite Misfits songs. So very excited to finally have some sort of copy of that. And this one just came on red vinyl with the blank white labels. Next up, we got the... Um, Jack the Ripper slash I'm a Hog for You by the Safaris. This is a 2003 U.S. press uh, from Sundays. Uh, I guess this these two songs came from a lost session of uh, stuff that was never released by the Safaris, but the Safaris are definitely up there as one of my favorite like surf garage bands. Uh, they famously did the song uh, Wipeout, and uh, yeah, they're just legends in surf garage rock, so excited to find this and it just came on black vinyl with the Sundays label. And then next up we have a uh, Pro Dirt. This is a Zero Boys EP. This was their 2013 release. Uh, Zero Boys are a phenomenal punk rock band and this was their first release after not releasing anything for 20 years. Um, and I think this was the second press that was limited to 600 on a uh, red vinyl. Um, I mean, th I wouldn't say this is better than any of, you know, the early seminal stuff from them, but it's definitely just cool to hear them a little bit older, a little bit wiser, uh, release some new music. Uh, so you have on side A, Detroit Boys, and uh, put some lipstick on it, and side B has Monkey Meat in Pro Dirt and Monkey Meat ended up being uh, the name of the full length album they ended up re releasing uh, the year after this came out. So I decided to find that. And I don't have any Zero Boys in the collection yet. So uh, Next up, full length LPs. I was so excited that uh, MoFi released this. Um, I'm not really that big into MoFi pressings unless you know, there's something that I really love and need to have, I'll buy it, but I, I don't know, I just don't care, and uh, it's just crazy, like, how fast the prices go up on these. Um, when I bought this, it was $80, and before it even arrived and came to me in the mail, it was already uh, two times worth the price I originally paid for it. It's just crazy, the whole flipping thing that goes on with MoFi's. Anyways, this is If Only I Could Remember My Name by David Crosby. I have an OG of this, and it's funny because I posted a picture of the OG on Instagram, and Mike from Hubtoons was like, God, I've been waiting for them to do a MoFi version of the album for so long. And then like a day or two after that, they announced that they were going to uh, do this. <laughs> so it's like I had some like sixth sense that it was coming. Uh, but yeah, such a phenomenal record. I mean, this is worth the $80 alone just to hear laughing. That is one of my all-time favorite songs. I remember when I first got into this album and David Crosby and I heard that song, I just became so fixated on it and like listened to it like hundreds of thousands of times on repeat. It's just such a like... It's like drug-induced just haziness and it just takes you on this journey. It's like the closest thing to getting stoned without getting stoned. It just takes you on this beautiful like airy trippy journey and I just love that and that entire this entire album pretty much does that for me. But the super vinyl uh, edition on 45 RPM 2 disc is just phenomenal and uh, if you really, really love David Crosby, I think this is definitely one to 
invest in, but the originals you can find for like 15, 20 bucks, and that's good enough just to have this in your collection. Everyone should have this. <laughs> um, next up, we have I got oh, give a big thank you to Dave from Local Bandography for messaging me and telling me about this band. He sent a song uh, from this album to me. He's like, hey, I think this is totally up your alley. I think you would really like it. And literally, 15 seconds into the song, I was like, I need to have this. This is um, Bits and Pieces by Piece de Resistance, 2022 US Press, their first album. Uh, best way I can describe this is just 70s, druggy, glam, post-punk, hard rock. I mean, you can totally hear like, the Stooges vibes, late 70s Bowie, but also like T-Rex, Velvet Underground, like it's just totally up my alley. <laughs> Dave was so right. Uh, but yeah, Moses Brown, uh, I think he's the singer in the band, was uh, part of these classic Texas punk bands called Glue and Institute, and this is his first foray with Peace de Resistance, but if you are totally like me and just love that whole 70s hard rock um, sort of experimental post-punk stuff that was coming out in the 70s, you would really, really like this album. Uh, check them out. Such a killer, killer release. This is definitely going to be uh, on my end of the year best releases of 2022 videos. This is just, this has got me excited about the future of music. <laughs> And uh, this one just came on their Peace Records green label. And then next up, I can't remember who I saw talk about this album, but I remember just the, the, the cover and it just stuck in my head and I just saw this recently at a record store and I decided to get it. But this is a Arca Azul by uh, Catano Velso, I think that's how you say it. It's Portuguese. This is a Brazilian album. Uh, this originally came out in 1973, and this is a 2018 European press of this great jazz, like, folk, Latin, rock album. It really has, like, a little bit of everything on it. But this was his fifth studio album. This was uh, recorded uh, shortly after he returned back to Brazil after being in exile in London for two years. Um, a lot of his early albums were very protest, folky, kind of like Bob Dylan, Woody Guthrie-esque, um, sort of opposing the Brazilian military military dictatorship during that time, and he got, it was just constantly harassed and arrested many times by the Brazilian government, so he kind of went over to London to like chill out for a bit, and then he came back and made the super experimental uh, rock but it also has, you know, the traditional Brazilian music thing to it. It's just such a crazy record, but it's so good. It takes you on just such a great little journey. And yeah, this is a killer record. So if you're not familiar with it, go check it out. And uh, this one just came on, I think this was limited to 500 pressings, but this clear vinyl. And then next up we have a uh, blow up movie soundtrack. Uh, this originally came out in 1966 and this is a 2014 music on vinyl European press. Uh, I actually recently just watched this movie because I've always he heard about how great it was and sort of like a great depiction of the whole mod 60s scene in London, blah 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 blah. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie and it has one of the most crazy mind-blowing endings I've ever seen in a movie, at least recently. And uh, I completely forgot Herbie Hancock did the soundtrack for this movie because I was looking through the jazz section. I was like, oh, I don't have any Herbie Hancock. Let's, let's see what albums they have here. And I saw this and I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot he did this. Um, so, yeah, all the compositions are by Herbie Hancock except there's one Yardbird song on here called the uh, Stroll On and the Yardbirds have a scene in the movie essentially where they're, where uh, David Hemming's character is chasing someone and uh, he goes into a club where the Yardbirds are playing. And it's just so weird to see like fetus Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck <laughs> playing and it's just a really cool, great scene. And this is a really great movie and soundtrack too if you're not familiar with it. And, uh, yeah, this one just came on a 180-gram, uh, Water Tower Music Warner label. 
And then next up, this is just one I kind of just like took a chance on. I don't know, I just really sort of dug the cover. Uh, this is uh, The Deadbeat Bang of Heartbeat City by Beach Slang. This came out in 2020. This is a U.S. press. Um, this is described as rock, glam, punk. I unfortunately haven't had time to listen to this yet. But this was the fourth and final studio album from the band. Uh, I remember coming back home after uh, buying this and kind of just trying to like look into the bands, see if I've heard any of their other stuff. And I ended up finding out that the lead singer slash guitarist, uh, James Alex, apparently was very emotionally and verbally abusive to his manager, so much so that she was diagnosed with PTSD because of it. And he got like a lot of bad backlash from it and he had some like mental health drug problems so they ended, just, just ended up just kind of breaking up shortly after this album was released. So yeah, very uh, messy end uh, to this band, but I'm interested to see what this sort of sounds like. And this one just came on red vinyl. And a hole I needed to fill in my sort of Seattle hard rock, alt rock um, scene in my collection is that I didn't have any Green River. I've been dying to get some Green River. Uh, this Probably without Green River, there would have never been a Seattle grunge scene. This, al or this band in general is just so important to what would end up happening with bands like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, and Soundgarden. Uh, this is their Dry as a Bone slash uh, Rehab Doll uh, comp album that they put together. Their two previous releases that they just threw on uh, double LP. Uh, originally came out in 1987. This is a 2019 European press. Um, just, yeah, you, Mark Arm from Mud Honey, who is the singer and guitarist on here, uh, this was his first band, and then you also had uh, Stone Gossard and Jeff Amet, who, after leaving Gr Green River, would join Mother Love Bone, and then after Andrew Wood died, they would form Temple of the Dog a for a little bit and release that amazing album, and then through that, they met Eddie Vedder, and then they went on to form Pearl Jam, so it's like you just see the domino effects of how important this band is to the scene, and uh, yeah, I've just been dying to get some Green River in the collection, and uh, both of the two LPs came on the sort of dark forest green vinyl. Uh, next up, I can't believe I have this. I've been looking for this album for several years now. And uh, Trench from Trent's Records, if you're not familiar with his YouTube channel, definitely go check him out. I'll link him down below. He has such a great channel and such great taste in music. Um, but I follow him on Instagram and I saw that he was trying to sell some things for Record Store Day to get some money for Record Store Day. And I knew he had this in his collection because he showed it in one of his videos before and I'm so jealous that he had it. Um, but he had it in his flip video and I instantly messaged him and was like, how much do you want for it? And he gave me a very, very good deal and I still can't believe I have this. This is a uh, Lucille Has Messed My Mind Up by Jeff Simmons. This is an original 1969 US press. Great rock, blues, psych. Um, Jeff Simmons, after this, would later join Mothers of Invention, and Frank Zappa actually produced this album, but he produced it um, under a pseudonym, I think, yeah, Lamar Brewster is what he went by, and he also wrote a few of the songs on here, including the one, um, Lucille Has Messed My Mind Up, which he later on ended up doing a version of on his uh, Joe's Garage album, but Jeff Simmons is the is definitely the superior version of that song to me. I, I remember I think I just randomly heard that song on Spotify and I just became again obsessed with it and I listened to it hundreds and thousands of times. I just love the groove and the feel of it and uh, yeah ever since then I was, I've just been on the lookout for this record. It's pretty rare and it's a little bit pricey but uh, Trent gave me a really killer deal on this and I'm so excited to finally have it. And uh, this one just came on this pink straight label. Next up, another album I've been looking for for a while. This is a uh, Nina Simone sings the blues. This originally came out in 1967, and this is a 2013 music on vinyl European press. 
great blues, jazz, rock. I love Nia Simone. She's one of my all-time favorite artists. I plan on having at least mostly everything she's ever released. She's just one of those artists for me that she just never did anything bad or wrong. She's just such a phenomenal singer, piano player, just human being in general. And this is an album that I would definitely consider in my top five favorite Nia Simone albums. Uh, she does an amazing cover of uh, uh, The House of the Rising Sun. In the opening song, Do I Move You, God, what a sexy, soulful, seductive song. I just, such a great opener uh, to an album. And she does One Little Sugar in My Bowl. And then she also does a song uh, that she co-wrote with her great friend and amazing writer, Langston Hughes, called Back, uh, I think it's Backlash Blues, Backlash Blues um, which is like one of her protest songs. And just, Nia Simone can do no wrong in my eyes. And uh, this is just an album I've always been on the lookout for. So I'm finally excited to have some sort of version of it. And uh, yeah, this one just came on, 180 gram. RCA Victor label. So yeah, that was all the stuff I bought myself. And then next up, uh, Randy reached out to me. He's a lovely, lovely viewer of mine. And he said, hey, I have some records I'd love to send you. And I was like, sure. And he sent me a lot of great records. Um, and he also sent me a few CDs. He sent me um, uh, Out of Three and Wailers, Wailers Everywhere by the Wailers. I believe they're two albums sort of put together. And then he sent me um, uh, The History by Cradle. I have this on vinyl, uh, one of Susie Quattro's early bands that she did with her sisters. And this is um, From Nowhere and Troglod Dynamite by The Trogs. I haven't listened to much of The Trogs, so I'm excited to listen to them. And then this is a Split by Groundhogs. I love The Groundhogs, and I don't have anything from them in my collection yet. So excited to listen to those. And then he also sent me Chuck Berry's Golden Decade, Volume 2, 1972 U.S. Press, uh, you know, Godfather of Rock, Chuck Berry, what else can you say? Uh, this was second in a series of three comps that uh, Chess Records did. I actually have the third volume, and I've been on the lookout for the other two volumes, so I'm excited to add this one. Now I just need the first one, and I'll have all three of them. Um, but yeah, Chuck Berry is just amazing. Um, we would not have rock and roll as we know it if it wasn't because of him. And uh, yeah, just you can never beat the where everything started. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this one just came on the orange and blue chest label. And then next up we have Aretha Gospel by Aretha Franklin. Uh, this originally came out in 1965, and this is a 1982 press, gospel, soul, funk, the usual Aretha thing. But this was originally titled Songs of Faith when it first came out, um, and this was actually recorded at her father's church in Detroit, in, in Detroit, where he was a pastor, the New Bethel Baptist Church, and where she grew up and learned how to sing in his choir. But I love, love, love her other amazing gospel album, Amazing Grace. I think it's one of the greatest live albums of all time, and that's definitely like a top 10 album for me. And I just, her voice is just such, so amazing. And uh, just hearing her sing gospel, seeing the stuff that you knew she grew up with and the stuff that you know means a lot to her. I think it's just so much different than, you know, the other soul and pop stuff she ended up doing. And uh, this one just came on a white checker records label. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot this one was a promo copy too, so cool little thing to have. And next up, a band I've been meaning to get into. This is a uh, Stranded by Roxy Music. Uh, this came out in 1973, and this is a 1974 Canadian press. Uh, Roxy Music, great art rock, glam, pop rock. This was their third studio album, and the first album they did after Brian Eno left. Um, yeah, I've been meaning to get into Roxy music, and, uh, you know, I'm a huge, like, 70s glam rock, hard rock 
girl so I, they're kind of like always one of those bands I hear about and meant to get into but I listened to this album and I really really enjoyed it I definitely want to find some of their earlier albums with Brian you know um, I've always heard those are kind of like the ones to get but even I think Brian Eno said this is actually one of his favorite Roxy music albums so maybe I'm completely wrong <laughs> um, and this one just came on the Yellow Echo label I think in America and Canada they were on Echo but in Britain they were on Island Records I think so and then next up another sort of greatest hits uh, little collection. This is Original Golden Hits Volume 1 by Jerry Lee Lewis. This originally came out in 1969 and this is probably like a couple of years after uh, reissue. Uh, I mean Jerry Lee Lewis again just one of those seminal godfathers of rock and roll and plus he had a little bit of a country twist to some of his songs. Um, yeah. <laughs> don't marry your cousin, especially your 13 year old cousin if you don't want to ruin your career. <laughs> so creepy and weird. Ugh hate that aspect of like some of the older rock musicians um but this is a uh, came on the original sun label and then next up we have the woodstock album by muddy waters i love muddy waters he's definitely up there for me as like one of my favorite blues artists but this is the original 1975 u.s press this is you know muddy waters doing his usual blues thing but then you have some added sort of folk aspects because you have um, Levon Helm and Garth Hudson from the band playing on here. And then you also have Paul Butterfield also playing harmonica on here too. Um, I don't think I've heard anything from this album before so I'm excited to listen to it. This one also came on the uh, Orange and Blue Chess label. And next up we have a Savage Eye by The Pretty Things. This is original 1975 US Press. Just great killer rock and roll. This was The Pretty Things' eighth album and their second and last album for their uh, Led Zeppelin label Swan Song. And the band actually broke up shortly after this album was released. Uh, this probably has one of the coolest inner sleeves I've ever seen. I love this sleeve. It's just like a close up of it of an eye. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to listen to this yet, but I've heard this is kind of different compared to some of their, you know, better known work in the late 60s. The only other Pretty Things album I have is their, an early album from them. I think it's like their second album when they're still kind of just, you know, kind of like a garage rock band. So I'm excited to hear their later work. And this is actually the first album I've ever gotten on the the Swan Song label. It's just such a killer label. My aunt actually has the, a tattoo of this on her hip and it's really well done. And uh, next up, I can't, again, an album I can't believe I have. Even though these aren't expensive or that hard to find, I've never seen one myself. But this is Reckless Eric's self titled debut album. Uh, this is an original 1978 UK press. And he's just great, like killer punk rock. Um, Ian Dury and Nick Lowe were producers on this album, just you know, seminal figures in the sort of uh, post-punk uh, rock punk scene in Britain. And this is probably well known for having Reckless Eric's biggest hit, which is Whole Wide Whole Wide World, which was kind of like this uh, punk rock love song. Like, I remember a lot of movies that were sort of indie and like edgy would have that song in them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm just so excited to finally have this. And uh, this one just came on Red and White Stiff Records label. And then also he sent his follow-up record, his Reckless Eric second al album, The Wonderful World of Reckless Eric. Again, 1978 UK, UK Press, and this has a bit more of the same rock punk thing, but has a little bit more of a new wave edge to it. Um, he also does a really great cover of Buddy Holly's uh, Crying, Waiting, Hoping on here, which is the one song I know from this album, but I'm not familiar with any of the other ones on here, so I'm excited to listen to it. And uh, this one came on Stiff Records label as well, and this one's on green vinyl sort of light translucent green 
Next up, we have Golden Butter, the best of the Paul Butterfield Blues Band. Uh, this is original 1972 U.S. Press, and this is just a great comp with some of, you know, the best Paul Butterfield Blues Band songs. I do have some Paul Butterfield. I have one of his later 70s sort of solo albums. But Paul Butterfield, if you're not familiar with him, he's considered one of, like, the greatest harmonica players ever, up there with, like, Lil Walter. Um, I wouldn't say he's better than Lil Walter, since Lil Walter is the OG, but Paul Butterfield ended up playing a lot with Muddy Waters, and, uh, yeah, just really killer, just blues rock on this album. Really, really dig it. And some crazy harmonica solos. I'm like, how's this dude even breathing? <laughs> he, you literally can't hear him take a breath at all. Um, and these just came on the Butterfly Electra label. Oh, and these I was, I was super excited about because I've been meaning to get more Tom Waits in my collection. Uh, this first one is Swordfish Trombone by Tom Waits, 1983 U.S. Press. This is sort of his loungy jazz, uh, blues rock, uh, eighth studio album from him and the first album he produced himself. Uh, yeah, I, I have Real Gone, which is probably one of my favorite Tom Waits songs, and I have a collection of some of his, like, early demos from before he did his first album, but I don't have any of his other stuff, and his 80 stuff to me is probably some of his better work, so excited to listen to that. And, uh, this is just came on the Island label. And then another great Tom Waits album, Frank's Wild Years, original 1987 U.S. Press. Blues, rock, a little alternative rock on here. His 10th studio album, and uh, this was done for the play, for a play he did by the same name. And I think it isn't confirmed, but there is rumors that Izzy Stradlin did some rhythm guitar on some of the songs on here. I don't think Tom Waits or Izzy have confirmed he has, but it's sort of rumored that he might play guitar on this. Um, and then, yeah, I think this one also came on the same island label. And then, a band I've never heard of before, this is A Maiden Bedlam by uh, the John Redborn Group. Uh, this is a 1977 Canadian press, and this is described as rock, folk, country music. Um, this was his ninth solo album, but I guess he's um, a bit more well known for his work with Burt Jansch and Pentacle. Um, but yeah, I haven't listened to this yet, but I'm excited to dig into it. And uh, this one just came on Shinachi Records. I think it's a it sounds very Canadian. <laughs> And uh, next up, this is Fisherman's Blues by the Wired Boys. Uh, this is original 1988 U.S. Press. Um, this is de described as like Celtic rock um, folk music, the fourth studio album from them. And uh, they do a really interesting cover of a Sweet Thing by Van Morrison. And they also do a, you know, a folk classic, This Land is Your Land by Woody Guthrie. So really stoked to finally have a copy of this. And uh, this one just came on, I think it's an Ensign Chrysalis label, but it's kind of just custom label. And then this was a band I've never heard of before, but I really, really dug this album. This is um, Frogs, Sprouts, Clogs, and Krauts by The Rumor. <laughs> uh, this is a 1978 UK press. This is their second studio album. And I would describe this as like rock, new wave, post-punkish. Uh, sounds The singer to me sounds a lot like Elvis Costello and they definitely give that Elvis Costello vibe. There are even some songs that kind of have that early ska reggae thing kind of going on like my Name is True by Elvis Costello had, and um, yeah, but even they, they sound like their own thing. They don't completely sound like an Elvis Costello ripoff band, and uh, they actually named themselves uh, The Rumor, a sort of a response to the album uh, Rumors by uh, Fleetwood Mac, so it's kind of cool, and uh, this uh, cover is pretty <laughs> interesting. 
But yeah, these are super cheap actually. I think this is like a $3 record, but I was surprised by how much I really liked this. And this is a, just came on this sort of um, custom label, I believe. And then next up we have uh, Time Has Come by the Chambers Brothers. Uh, this is an original 1967 U.S. press. Great funk, soul, psych rock, the usual Chambers Brothers thing. And this was their debut studio album. I have their other album, uh, Love, Happiness, and Peace, which is like a split um, studio album and live album. I think that's such a great idea. And I really love them. They, were, they really kind of figured out how to really blend soul music and psych rock music um, so well. And uh, I'm really excited to listen to this album. And this one just came on Columbia 2i, 360 Stereo Sound label. And this one I was really excited about too. This is a, a Jesus Urge Superstar by Urge Overkill. This is original 1989 US press. Great alt rock, hard rock. Um, a lot of the later Urge Overkill albums would kind of lean more towards pop rock, alternative rock. But this was definitely when they were kind of going hard and heavy. Kind of even had, it reminds me like a little bit of like Melvin stuff, kind of like almost sled, sludgy. Uh, metal, uh, but this was their debut album. I just love Urge Overkill. I think they're one of the most underrated ba bands, especially when it comes to like the whole 90s alternative rock scene. Um, yeah, they, I just love them so much. I have their um, 90s album Saturation. I just love it. Everything they've done. And I recently got their newest album, We, and I really enjoyed that album too. And uh, yeah, just cannot recommend them enough if you just love great rock, pop, alternative music. And uh, this one just came on a custom label as well. So yeah, that was all the stuff Randy sent me. Thank you so much, Randy. That uh, package really uh, means a lot to me. And then this next uh, batch of stuff um, was stuff um, Jesse sent to me. He um, found like a whole bunch of this, uh, all this in excess stuff. I think he said he found it at a, a thrift store and he knows how much of like an excess fan I am, especially their album Kick is one of my all time favorite albums. And uh, he sent me this stuff and uh, he found this Devil Inside 7 inch, original 1987 US press by in excess of course. <laughs> Great pop rock if you're not familiar with NXS for some reason. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Devil Inside is from the album Kick and then on the B side is On The Rocks, which I don't think was ever released on an album, correct me if I'm wrong, but it just came on this Atlantic red and black label. And then this is really cool. This actually came with a poster that was supposed to be in this die cut. But as soon as I got it, I immediately put it up next to my bed so I can wake up and go to sleep with Michael Hutch's, Hutchins' beautiful face next to me. <laughs> um, but this was a, a global tour pack they did, I think in the UK only, because when they went on their kick tour, they went to, did a few shows in America, went to the UK, and then ended in America. So this was from has some songs that were recorded earlier in the American leg of the tour and then it just also has um, Mystify and Biting Bullets which were on the album. Oh no, Biting Bullets was on Listen Like Thieves actually which was the album before Kick. And then on the second side it has Shine Like It Does and Never Tear Us Apart live versions from the US leg of the tour. But this is a really cool little th cool thing and uh, yeah, this is just, I just love, I just love the excess so much, and I just love it. <laughs> and, uh, this just came on this yellow custom label. And then, uh, he also found this 12-inch single of a new sensation, um, but this is called the Nick 12-inch mix, uh, but it's essentially just free workings of the song New Sensation to make them more poppy and dance and like electronic. I wouldn't say it's my I prefer over the original version, but it's definitely an interesting mix. 
and then on the second side is a, a remix of the song Guns in the Sky. And then it just came on the red, white, and green Atlantic label. And they also sent me uh, two books. Uh, the first one is The Spit Boy Rule Tales of a, a Ex Kana in a Female Punk Band by Michelle Cruz Gonzalez. Um, I believe she she was a drummer for a punk band called Spit Boys or The Spit Boy. I don't know. I, I've never heard of them before, but I'm always excited to learn about, um, you know, female uh, drummers and artists in punk music. So I decided to read that. And then this I was very excited about. I've been meaning to get this, but this is Violence Girl by Alice Bag, um, East LA Rage to Hollywood Stage, a Chicana punk story. I mean, Alice Bag, Bag is such a seminal female killer punk rock singer. Her band Alice and the Bags were featured in the documentary The Decline of Western Civilization. They were really a huge influence on the whole LA punk scene during the late 70s and just She's just fucking kick ass, <laughs> and she still kicks ass to this day. And uh, yeah, decided to finally have this, and super stoked to read this. <sighs> That's all I got <laughs> this week. Oh, and we're at 36 minutes, even longer than the last one. Great. Um, thank you so much for sticking around if you made it this far in the video, <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.